What the hell was that? Goyf. Where are we? When are we? We're descending for the mirror, yeah. At 4.29 p.m. on Wednesday, October 21st, 2015. 2015? Hello, everyone. It's Seth, probably better known as Seth from Olive. And it's time for another edition of Much Abru About Nothing. And this week, we're returning to one of my all-time favorite decks. If you remember Budget Magic from like five years ago, we used to play Mono White Amiria, and I love that deck. Well, now Mono White Amiria, thanks to some sweet new additions like Luminous Brood Moth, Rager Captain of Eos, Charming Prince, is making a comeback with the biggest new addition, of course, being Skyclave Apparition, the absurd removal spell for the deck. So essentially, the idea of this deck, it's pretty straightforward. Our namesake card is Amiria the Sky Ruin, a land that lets us reanimate something every single turn for free once we get it and seven planes on the battlefield. It's kind of like the white version of Valica. It's from that same cycle. So all we really want to do with this deck is just kind of like grind out card draw in the early game with Thraben Inspectors, Wall of Omens, blink those maybe with Charming Princes and Flicker Wisps to draw more cards to hit our land drops to set up for our late game, which is almost unbeatable as long as we have access to our graveyard with a myriad reanimating things and eventually Sud Titan coming down to get back stuff from our graveyard, which is good by itself, but it's insane with the flicker effect. So we can like Sun Titan, get back a Charming Prince, which can flicker Sun Titan so it gets back something else so it can rebuild our board really quickly. And that's essentially the deck. We're hoping to grind out value, slow the game down, eventually have an unbeatable reanimator late game. How good are the new additions, Skyclave Apparitions, Luminous Broodmoss, Charming Prince, Ranger Captain of Eos, Tomato White, Amiria, and Modern. How good is the deck? Let's jump into a league, see it in action. Thanks for watching. I hope you all enjoy it, and I'll be back in a bit with a wrap-up. Today's video is brought to you by Card Kingdom, and you can pre-order all the Keldheim cards you need by heading over to cardkingdom.com. All right, much improved about nothing time. We are playing some Mono White Amiria. Oh man, I have loved Mono White Amiria for a long time. And the deck, we haven't played it in a while. We played it on Budget Magic a long time ago. I think we might've played it on stream once. This used to be one of my favorite decks. And the deck has gotten some really sweet new additions recently. Uh, Luminous Brood Moss. It's got uh, Skyclave Apparitions. So some really big upgrades. So yeah, let's, uh, let's see if we can uh, grind some people out with the slowest, mono whitiest uh, value, value deck available in modern. Oh, Miria. Come on, Tron. Actually, no, probably not Tron. If it's Tron, they probably just carn us before we get to Field of Ruin. Oh, we're on the, okay, yeah. Tron's fine. Let's, let's run. Let's run. Um, all right. Now we have now we have functional buttons again. <laughs> I forgot that I installed Moto on my new computer, and I forgot that it it gives you the newfangled button. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. All right. Well, bad news is our opponent's a fast combo deck that is pretty scary. Good news is our field of ruins might be able to help slow our opponent down. I think though, in game one, unfair matchups are our worst matchups. Opponent, I'm gonna play a land. Well, we will field of ruin. We will blow up a land. Hopefully, this is a strip mine. Get a planes. All right, no land. That's good. Usually, Belcher decks cannot afford to play lands. Play Thraben Inspector. I still think this is a pretty tough matchup. We'll see. If our opponent's light on lands, we might be okay because we have another field of ruin. Opponent plays a tap land, passes. Well, I guess we just keep blowing up lands. What do we have that's actually Shining Shoal maybe? Yeah, we don't have a ton that actually stops our opponent from belching us. So I think attacking the mana makes the most sense. Although it does mean we're not developing our board and we're missing land drops ourselves too, which is awkward. Oh, they keep drawing lands. Oh, oh, we could be dead any Oh my goodness, okay. We keep drawing Field of Ruins. We will accept. <laughs> All right, strip mine number three. If they went through three strip mines, I swear. I swear, I swear, I swear. All right, then we will Charming Prince to blink Wall of Omens to draw a card. Hit you for one. So we don't have a very fast clock, but we have triple strip mine in... <laughs> Triple strip mine in modern, which is pretty impressive. Drawing the fourth field of ruin would be sweet. Also, getting to Sun Titan to get back field of ruins. Oh my god, are they just gonna win? Are they gonna win through three strip mines? That would be absurd. Metamorphose. 
Taplan, Fizzle, Recross Pass. Hmm. So I assume our opponent is going to set this up with the Miracle Wheel on top, which might mean we can Fizzle it with Ranger Captain of Eos. And once our opponent draws it, they might actually be in a pretty bad spot. If we can force our opponent to play Belcher before they can immediately win with Belcher, then I kind of like where we're at, because then we can just snag it with Skyclave Apparition. If our opponent can get to the point where they win all in one turn, though, it gets a lot worse. I mean, I guess this also lets us dig for a land, which is sweet. I wonder if they try to play around... Eh, we'll see. I wonder if they try to play around us uh having a another field of ruin you can't really play around another field of ruin can you after three are gone i'm kind of impressed that our opponent's deck got strip mine three times and they're still managing to combo off for the most part i mean if we could stop the wheel that should buy us at least a couple to several turns that might also force our opponent to run out the belcher early i don't know i guess it's also possible maybe could they stack two wheels on top are they gonna play around ranger captain of I i'm not sure how this goes it's gonna be interesting i mean if they put the wheel on top we definitely have to ranger captain it the problem in this matchup is a lot of our value stuff which can be good in other matchups just isn't really all that effective against a deck like belcher like broodmoth whatever flicker wisp we can generate value with it but it's not it's not especially helpful neither is really like winds of abandon even skyclave is pretty hit or miss so we have a lot of cards that are not ideal for this matchup in our main deck Although, maybe if you draw three strip mines, it doesn't matter. Well, they put Symbiosis on top. Okay. So they win the Clash. They keep it on top. We will put Flicker Wisp to the bottom. Huh. Well, go to combat. Attack you. Now what do we do? Was not really expecting Turn Timber Symbiosis to stay on top of our opponent's deck. So that means a land ritual, ritual Belcher win? I don't think we can sack. Huh. All right. Well, we will get down a Flicker Wisp. Flicker Charming Prince. Thraben Inspector. Return Charming Prince. Exile Wall of Omens. Well, we'll see. We could just be dead. This untapped land is frightening. We're tapped out. Our opponent knows that if they can kill us, they can kill us. And they did just stack their deck. I don't know if they were stacking it to win this turn or in two turns, though. We gotta hope it's two turns. Opponent, tap land. Okay. So we get back Wall of Omens. We draw a card. So I'm assuming the wheel's coming next. And then maybe Ranger Captain can fizzle it. We draw the land, which is fine, and a land, which is fine. Well, go to combat. Attack. Hit our opponent for all we can. Opponent takes it. Well, we will Ranger Captain of Eos. We also gotta hope they don't have a bolt in hand. We need this to live until our opponent's turn. Uh, opponent. They might, uh, this might be our opponent realizing that they're not gonna be able to wheel, and then they die. Hopefully that's what's happening. Wow. Manamorphose. Are they going to wheel at instant speed? Manamorphose into the wheel. But I mean, Ranger Captain should still stop this, right? Hopefully? Maybe? All right, so opponent reforges the soul. Oh, and a shining soul. That's interesting. Ranger Captain of Eos tutors up, hmm, I guess a Thraben Inspector. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. So we got to play Thraben Inspector. This should give us lethal. Pass the turn, upkeep. Sack Ranger Captain. So opponent can't cast non-creature spells, which means we're not dying. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight damage on the battlefield. Hopefully that means we win. Opponent passes. Uh, windswept teeth. Go to combat. Attack. <laughs> okay. 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 It didn't feel like we had a lot of tools for this unfair matchup, but we managed to get there, and now we hopefully get to bring in, well... Hmm. I guess we get a little bit more hate. I guess that last plan is more or less what we're trying to do. Hopefully hit our strip mines. Probably better known as Field of Ruids and, uh, and go from there. Uh, so Kami of False Hope doesn't really do anything. Damping Sphere is good. That does slow down our opponent's ritual plan if we find it. Uh, Winds of Abandon also doesn't do anything. We might just bring in random, <laughs> seemingly random cards over some of the bad cards. So what's actually good in this matchup? Ranger Captain is good. Shining Shoal has potential to be good. Field of Ruins obviously good. Damping Sphere is good. Our paths are, they don't do anything, right? They just do nothing. But the rest of our cards also don't do much of anything. I mean, I guess we'd rather have Fort Tender. Huh. Hmm. Forge Tender and... I don't know, maybe we keep a couple of paths to pass our own random dorks? 
it's either that or like even mind sensor was just basically just a two one kami of false hope is just a one one i guess we could bring in cantrips well we do want the the thraben inspector for sure graveyard hate doesn't do anything but this does cycle maybe we try to cycle to find our our good cards yeah all right let's, let's do that cycling to try to find our good cards is probably better than path against a deck with no creatures so yeah all right or no no real creatures i guess i got simian spear guy but that doesn't really count oh all right the scary thing is, this time we are on the draw, and our opponent's deck can win on turn one. Uh, no, ugh, no hate cards into hate cards, but no lands. Ugh, all right, yeah, uh, we will put Forge Tender and, jeez, yeah, I guess Soul Guide Lantern to the bottom. Ooh. Okay, this does not, this does not look great. This still seems like a really hard matchup for our deck. <laughs> opponent. Well, good awakening passes. Well, Amiria, go. Uh, booted. Are we dead this turn? Tap land. Well, probably not dead quite yet. Soon. Soon, I expect. Well, they kept their hand, so they almost certainly have the kill or the ability to set it up. Uh, let's cry. Uh, we don't want either, either of these. I think we're looking for Damping Spear, mostly. Pass the turn. Are we dead this turn? Probably. Ritual. Iron Craig Feet. Belcher. And, well, let's see if they brought in a basic. All right, they did not. Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that is kind of how I expect this matchup to go, in all honesty. Well, at least we're on the play. If we can find a Damping Sphere, there's some hope. Oh, this matchup. This matchup has to be one of the worst possible for our deck. <laughs> we might have gotten pretty lucky to be able to piece it together in game one. I mean, I guess drawing three Field of Ruins is pretty over the uh, above the curve. Well, all right, we're on the play. We'd really like Damping Sphere on turn two. Hmm. Are Ranger Captains of Eos is even enough? Not really. Well, all right. I guess this time we have Ranger Captain of Eos and stuff to play early, but this is still... All right, we'll keep it. Uh, we'll put a Forge Tender to the bottom. So we gotta hope our opponent's hand's not perfect. And then maybe we can use these Ranger Captains to slow our opponent down. Well, land and Thraven Inspector. Pass the turn. We could also draw Damping Sphere. That would be that would be a good one. Uh, boot it. Tab land. And passes. Oh, flooded Strand. Crack Flooded Strand. Planes. And all of Omens. And draw a... Well, all right. I mean, I guess if we live, we can go on the Strip Mine plan. We could die this turn. It is not impossible. Land, two Rituals, Iron Craig Belcher. All right, tap land. Opponent passes. I'll play Field of Ruin. Strip Mine you. Get a Planes. Hit you for one. Opponent. Come on, no land. No land. No land, no mana. All right, another tap land. Opponent passes. I'll go to combat. Attack. Hit ya. Field of Ruin. Strip Mine you. Get a Planes. Well, we're drawing our Strip Mines. Pass the turn. About it. Shatter Skull. Smashing. Oh, tapped. Okay. Not dead yet. Crack the clue. Shining Shoal. Interesting. Well, play Ranger Captain of Eos. Tutor up a Forge Tender. Play Forge Tender. Hit you. So we don't have to sack Ranger unless our opponent... Unless our opponent starts ritualing. If it looks like our opponent's going to be able... Like, once we see an Iron Craig feed or something hit the stack, then we have to sack Ranger. Until that point, we can wait. If they just have to cast Belcher fairly... Yeah, I mean, save our Ranger, Captain. Ooh, and opponent misses a land drop. Okay, I like that. Well, we will play Luminous Broodmoth. Works really well with Ranger. Hit ya, hit ya. If we can get our opponent low enough, we can at least force a draw with Shining Shoal. <laughs> <laughs> Hilariously. But these ranger captains might be enough. Opponent plays a tap land and passes. I'll go to combat. Attack you. Hit our opponent. Ranger captain part two for a forge tender. Play the forge tender. And now we're going for it. Upkeep. Sack a ranger. Comes back. Broodmoth. Our new cards are paying off. Our new cards are paying off. It returns. We get to find a one drop. Not super relevant. And that should, that should do it. That should do it. Oh, we can beat the unfair decks. Wow. We got to piece it together in a really unique way. Uh, but apparently, some strip mines, Ranger Captain Broodmoth <laughs> is enough. And we got our opponent low enough that if they belch, at least we can Shining Shoal the Belcher. And I, I actually am not 100% sure how that works. If anyone knows, let me know in the comments. If you Shining Shoal a Belcher that's like 40 damage, my guess would be the end result would be our opponent takes six or whatever and we take 34 and then and then uh the game is a draw but 
I'm not actually a thousand percent sure, but that, that's my guess is this would draw the game. But regardless, we didn't need it. Our, uh, our brood moth lock. Good enough. Sweet, sweet. All right. Much brew about nothing time. We are Amiria ing in modern and yeah, a little land light, but we should be able to find our lands between between our buddy Thrabes and Wall of Omens. We got some redraws. Plus Meyer for our opponent passes. Uh, well, Flooded Strand. Crack it. Plains and Thrabes goo. Well, step one, hit our land drops. Step two, I feel like we should be pretty good with grinding with fair decks. We'll see. If our opponent's like Junding or Death Shadowing, hopefully that's good news. If they're permeable tightening, hmm, that's uh, that's scarier news. We'll see. Oh, well, maybe it's maybe it's someone still playing Jund. Is this a Goyf? Are we getting Goyf? It is. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, Goyf. People are still people are still trying. I appreciate the dedication of Jund players in modern. They don't give up, no matter how grim it looks. <laughs> they just keep they just keep Goyfing. <laughs> they trust next set. Next set, there's gonna be something that's gonna make my deck good again. <laughs> Oh, uh, it's a little like Popper Storm players. Popper Storm players are maybe the most impressive group in all of Magic because literally every <laughs> every playable <laughs> and semi-playable Storm card is now officially banned. So they make do with like whatever the the Storm card that tutors a basic land out of your deck, and they they still they still make it happen. They still make it happen somehow. All right, opponent's got a Ren and Six, which is obnoxious. Um, well, we play a Tap Land. <laughs> yeah, I guess we just pass, pass, leave up the path and the ability to sack a clue. We do need to hit our land drops. That is, that is still number one on our list. Opponent has Ren and Six, so they're going to be hitting their land drops. Getting up to like Sun Titans and Brood Moss would be super helpful. Opponent, hey, Ren and Six gets back to land. Sure, 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 sure. Cracks it. Oh boy, we're probably going to lose to John now that we made fun of it. Modern Karma. Bloodbraid into Abrupt Decay. Going to hit our Wall of Omens to get in some damage. Well, that's not ideal. Well, let's take a clue. Land wins. Opponent combat hits us. Pony also still has five cards in hand. We really need lands here. Really, really, really. Down to 13. Land. Oh, goodness. Goodness gracious. Um, well, three minutes. We don't win if we don't hit lands. Like, that is... That is the entirety of this message. Uh, second clue, looking for land. All right, so we do hit a land. Well, I guess this means we pass. How bad is Ren and Six ultimating? Probably pretty bad, right? So we can pass double block blood braid and path goyf. Oh dear, oh dear. Hmm, I guess this isn't good for us. Well, I guess we have to path the goyf. Was tempted to try to path one of our Thraben inspectors to get a land, but Pony has so many land drops with Ren and Six anyway, I guess this really doesn't matter much. So Inquisition can take a Winds of Abandon or the Ranger Captain of Eos. Yeah, we're in a pretty pretty tough spot. Takes Ranger Captain, goes to combat, attacks. Well, we will double block a Blood Braid. Are we pinging? Yep. All right. Opponent pings, plays a land, passes. Well, we will play Ranger Captain of Eos. Still having a really tough time hitting lands. Ranger Captain of Eos for Thraben Inspector. Play Thraben Inspector. Pass the turn. Opponent. I mean, we have some powerful stuff to get to, but we're just so short on mana. Overgrow tube tapped. Opponent. Proxa. Oh, and it returns. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Uh, we will discard a Luminous Broodmoth. That's a lot of discarding. Crocs a two. Well, I think we discard Sun Titan, sadly. Oh, do we? What if we draw land land? Can we get rid of Broodmoth? What are we doing next turn? Probably wins of, all right, we'll discard both Broodmoths. We're gonna hold out hope that we get to the Sun Titan. Bloodstained Mire. Cracks it. Oh, do they have, oh, if they have Fatal Push or Bolt, that's kind of bad for us. Looks like they do. Bolts, well, all right, sack it. Up it. Gets back the land. Oh, Ren and Six is so good. Maybe I gotta take back the, the mean things I've said about Jun. Opponent hits us, down to seven. Not a land. Well, let's sack the clue, look for a land. No deal. Uh, well, Winds of a Man and Croxa. Yeah, we're just, we're dying. We're dying by not hitting our land drops. I think our opponent has twice as much mana as we do. Somehow we've hit four lands and 19 cards, which is ooh, frighteningly low for a, an Amiria deck. Opponent goes to combat, going to hit us down to four. I mean, Ren and Six Lightning Bolt probably kills us, but I feel like we're just super dead now. Oh! Hmm. Well, that's unfortunate. I turned off auto yields, but... Moto did not recognize. You saw the click. You saw the click. 
But Moto did not recognize it. We could have shining showed the lightning bolt, but apparently, I mean, I guess the good news is I don't think we're winning that game anyway. And apparently it was going to take a, a few hours to draw land. So that is a little disappointing because we did click the shining shoal button, but uh, I guess it wasn't meant to be, unfortunately. All right. Opponents playing Jund. I mean, I guess technically that's a punt, although I still blame Moto because we did, you saw it. You could see, you could see the click turn off auto yields before the bolt, but apparently not enough before the bolt. Uh, all right. So shining shoals out forge tenders, I guess in, I don't know if ghostly prison's worth it or not. Probably not. I feel like in general, we can, we can outvalue Jun. The issue is if we get stuck on lands, it's pretty rough. Um, and that's going to one ranger captain run it like that. All right. We get to play first. Well, we have we have lands this time, which is encouraging. That's a good sign. Lands are good. This hand's okay. I mean, I guess it's decent. Kami's not great, but the rest of our cards are good. Uh, but wouldn't? Considering their opening hand. All right. Well, we will... I think just play Amiria. Kami doesn't really do anything yet anyway, so might as well play the tap land. A uh, bonnet. What if I else? Cracks, what if I else? Blood crypt. Untap down to 17 and discard inquisition i will see they have two good two drop options or maybe they want to protect a goya for something a bob all right so i assume this means our opponent has ren in six which is bad for us well we're drawing our lands this game that's something wall of omens draw card sudden titan well pass the turn yeah i assume taking charming prince means our opponent wants to play ren in six and have it not get attacked would make the most sense to me stomping grounds untapped ren in six well, we called it. Gets back to land. Well, now our opponent gets land drops forever, which is kind of a bummer. Well, play a land, play Kami of Fault Hope. Um, path Kami of Fault Hope. Get a planes, pass the turn. I mean, at this point, this is the opposite of last game. Now we have all the lads, and we're basically on the try to get to the Sun Titan before it gets Thought Seize plan. Liliana would be absolutely brutal here, making us start discarding stuff. That would be, well, not Liliana. No double black. I guess land destruction would also be super obnoxious gets back a land season pyromancer to discard some cards and draw some cards discards two lands that's a combo well john's looking good this game Ay, more lands oh dear oh uh, well last game we wanted to hit our land drops this game we would like to stop hitting our land drops <laughs> if our opponent can get rid of this sun titan we are in sorry shape opponent it's a land Blaze it. Cracks it. Gets a forest. If this spits into Thought Seas, I swear. Eh, okay. We do not care about explosives, so that's fine. Well, I mean, okay, we'll see. We'll see how good uh, Sun Titan can do for us here. We will get our... I guess we take Misville Plains. So there's Explosives X0. Opponent. Attacks. Well, block. If opponent wants to kill the wall, that's not a big deal at this point. Well, play the Plains. Sun Titan. Get back Charming Prince. Charming Prince gets to blink Sun Titan. End step. Sun Titan returns. Gets back Windswept Teeth. Oh, well, we almost have a Myria turned on. And we have blockers. Can we get through this Ren in six, which is going to ultimate? And does our opponent have land destruction? Thought seizes our wall of omens. Alright. Yeah. And Goyf, sure. And a tap land. Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa! Okay, that's that's the Judd we know and love. <laughs> Apparently Judd does not have a good Sun Titan answer. Whew. Well, thankfully that thought seize came one turn too late for our opponent. Oh, Ren and Six. Ren and Six is obnoxious. Good lord. It's not like Ren and Six is unbeatable, but boy, when that comes down on turn two, it draws so many cards and makes your mana so perfect. Um, it's like, I mean, it's like a Crucible of Worlds that you can get away with playing in your main deck in a lot of decks, basically, but that by itself is pretty strong. Maybe Kami's not worth it. Kami does die. It's only a one of. Yeah. It was a good path target. <laughs> We would like to minimize the amount of things that die to Ren and Six, apparently. Maybe we keep a Shining Shoal. Like, who expects a Shining Shoal? No one. No one, no one, no one. And maybe that could get our opponent? Ghostly Prison could be all right, but Ren and Six helps our opponent hit their land drops, and they have Assassin's Trophy, Abrupt Decay type effects, so I feel like it's not super likely to stick around. All right, let's try it like that. One Shining Shoal. Opponent's on the play for game three. Is it time for Judd's Revenge? <laughs> uh, hopefully not. Hopefully it's time for Amiria's comeback. 
Well, uh, this one is a mulligan. Cannot keep the one field of ruin. Oh, dear. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. This is... I, I think we figured out how Jun wins. You need to have your opponent keep having <laughs> field of ruin be their only land in hand multiple times. You know what? I think we gotta keep this. I don't think we can go to five. I think we just gotta hope that our white mana comes through. I mean, if we draw a single white source, this hand becomes pretty reasonable. Well, Broodmoth is not a single white source. Oh, come on. Come on, magic gods. Not like this. <laughs> don't give Jund a freebie. <laughs> it's 2021. Jund's not supposed to win. <laughs> oh, opponent. Black Leaf Glyphs. Can we dodge a Ren and Six one time? Oh, boy. The answer is a clear no. All right. We need a white source this turn. Like, that's essentially- Don't be Miss Felplanes. Just an untapped white Oh. Oh, the magic gods are not pleased. Uh, or they- They they have pitied Jun, finally. <laughs> they have pitied Jun, decided to give it a freebie. Potent, Liliana. Yeah. I mean, we're getting pretty close to the scoop em up part of this game, I think. We'll discard a Broodmoth. Opponent. Passes. Well, meh. You can't fight the magic gods. I mean, could we have mulled to five? We could have. I think that this keep is correct, though. Crocs, uh... I'm very tempted. Yeah. All right, let's, let's... Ugh, well, we can fight to the bitter end, I guess. Or, or a slightly bitterer end than where we're at now. We're discarding the hand size anyway, so Crocs is not a huge deal. I mean, it will be. And this Liliana ultimating is a huge, huge deal. And it's also stripping our hand, which is also not great. I think we give it one more turn. And if we draw if we draw an untapped white source, then maybe we continue. We could get to Skyclave on Liliana. All right. Well, honestly, I would keep that hand again. I would. Oh my goodness, it was going to be Field of Ruin Amiria. Yeah, I mean, there's no way this would have worked out. I mean, I keep it again. I think it's a little uh, just unfortunate how it turned out, but meh. That's magic. Well, I will say we had some really rough running, uh, and we got to see game two, the power of what our deck can do against Jun. And I think in general, these fair matchups are what we want to play, but our opponent had three very ideal draws with a uh, Ren and Six on turn two every game. We had two mana screw games, and then the one game where we didn't get mana screwed, we won really easily, so... I think I chalk it more up to the variance of magic than uh, than this being a bad matchup for our deck. I actually think this is a, a pretty good to uh, maybe even above average matchup, but eh, on to the next one. All right, much brew about nothing time. We are a Miria ing in modern on the draw, and this hand's, uh, this hand's reasonable. Ooh, spirits, 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 eh? Well, this is going to be interesting. Uh, what I'm worried about about spirits is the evasion. Oh, oh, this is, uh, well, I'm still worried about evasion, but this is not spirits. This is, uh, the oh, blue, blue, the Grand Architect deck, like mono blue artifact aggro Grand Architect shenanigans. Have not seen this deck in a while. Opponent gets and hits us. Well, path is fine, but I think we just wall of omens. Draw a card. Pass the turn. Opponent. Hmm. Actually, I don't know. Why the pathway? Maybe they're splashing sideboard cards? Still gotta be the mono blue. Mono blue artifact deck. Another pathway on blue. And Ethereum Sculptor. Sure. And throw another God Pharaoh. Sure. And here comes Looter Scooter. Well, we'll see. This is actually a clock. That Throne of the God Pharaoh is offering our opponent a lot of damage right now. Yeah, down to 11. Well, Field of Ruin, Flicker Wisp, Flicker... Ha. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, we might be in trouble. We might be in trouble. Because they can tap everything thanks to Crewing. Well, I guess we blink Wall. Was wondering if it was better to untap a land so we could path, but then that's basically just making our opponent sack the Mausoleum Wander. We gotta hope this Wall of Omen sticks to kill the Smuggler's Copter. If our opponent can, okay, load Stone Golem and Stone Coil Serpent, and our opponent is officially out of cards, but I think we get awkwardly burned out by Throne of the God Pharaoh. Opponent attacks, attacks. Yeah, we're actually gonna block, block. We just need to get any creatures we can off the battlefield because of this Throne of the God Pharaoh. Copter, tap, tap, so we're taking four, three, down to eight. 
Hmm. I'll play Field of Ruin. We also can't Shining Shoal this. We can path something. It'd probably have to be Lodestone, and then we're taking two, three. Yeah, if it wasn't for this Throne of the God Fair, it would be okay, but this is wrecking us. And I mean, I guess the Lodestone Golem's not great either. I'll play Thraben Inspector. Get a clue. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. Yeah, we just don't have a way to answer that. Opponent. More Stone Coil Serpents. Crews. Crew tax, yeah. I mean, they they just got us. Ugh. Oh, yeah. Throne of the God Fair. Do we have answers for that? Well, we get this Heliod's intervention. We get ghostly prisms. Probably another Kami. This is okay, but it's still like more okay than game winning. We can go down a Brood Moth. We can go down Shining Shoals. And yeah, I guess one we'll Thraben Inspector. We need to draw. Re we just didn't hit removal. That was like the big issue. We have not been good at drawing. I don't think we've drawn a single Skyclave Apparition this league, have we? We definitely haven't resolved a single Skyclave Apparition. We might have drawn one during uh, one of our Mana Screw games, but gonna have to hit the removal. Yeah, the creatures are kind of whatever. Like, we have stuff that's good against our opponent's random creatures. The issue is more the non-creatures. All right. Well, this actually looks like a functional hand. We will take it. Planes, go. About it. Considering their options. Plays an island and a stone coil served. Uh, well, Field of Ruin and Wall of Omens draw card. Pass the turn. Blink Moth and a Smuggler's Copta. Uh, play a Plains, and I think we just Ghostly Prison. If our opponent, our opponent can get in a loot if they want to, but it's going to take them all their mana. This Ghostly Prison should slow our opponent down a bit. Opponent. We would prefer not to have to pass a uh, Skyclave Apparition, anything other than that Throne. We don't have that many answers to Throne. About it. Grand Architect. Okay. Sure. And a Walking Ballista X1. Hmm. Well, maybe we will. Let's see. We do need to get rid of Grand Architect, which I guess means... Yeah, all right. We'll spend the Skyclave. Skyclave Apparition. Get rid of Grand Architect. Flooded Strand. Go. Would have been sweet to get the full like Winds of Abandoned Wrath, but this is this is fine for now. Lodestone Golem. Alright, yeah. Uh boo. Nint passes. Well, play a planes. Field of Ruin, the card draw land. Get a planes. And pass the turn. Getting to the point where a Sun Titan would be nice. This ghostly prison has certainly been helpful. Another lodestone. Well, we will Huh. You know what? I think I think we got a plan. Okay, sure. Lodestone. Opponent passing. Get a planes. Path all of omens. Get a planes. Untap. Ranger Captain of Eos. Double lodestone is annoying. That's making all of our stuff super expensive. Get a Thraben Inspector. Play a Field of Ruin. We need one more land. Once we get one more land, then we can Winds of Abandon away all the creatures. And then I'll like where we're at. We need one more land, though. Opponent. All right. Very expensive Chief Engineer. Jeez. So many lodestone golems. Wow. This draw might actually get us. Our opponent might be able to stacks us. Well, we will Skyclave Apparition. Get rid of a Lodestone Golem. Okay, we're back to needing a land. <laughs> Our opponent's drawn Lodestone Trod, which is extremely taxing. Pathway. One card in hand. What is it? All right, opponent does not like the one card in hand. Gonna loot. Can't really do much attacking, though. Yeah. Smuggler's Copter pays loots. Discards, wow, Stone Coil, interesting. Down to 16. Walking Ballista X3. Can we draw land, please? Oh, this is so brutal. Well, play Thraben Inspector. Get a clue. Sack the clue. Oh, wow, we're gonna get stacked. Oh, this is, this is not good. This is not good. Oh, no. Oh, opponents going to start spending some Ballista Counters. Get a 4-4. Four, four. Will we ever draw a land? That is quite literally the entire game. And we got to do it soon because if we don't do it soon, we're going to die to our opponent's random janky beats here. Opponent goes attacking, pays four. Well, this would be the turn to do it. Ugh, if they had only drawn two of their three lodestones, we, uh, we would have this game on lock. But three out of the three is a different story. Opponent, Stone Coil Serpent. Can we draw land? Never. Yeah, that might just be the game, I think. Oh, Magic Gods. Whoo! Oh, there they all are. 
a million of them, but too late deck, not in the right order, and the end result is, I believe, our demise. Uh, put it. Smuggler's Copter goes to combat, attacks, attacks, loots. Well, we'll see. This does mean we have to put all of our stuff in front of the Stone Coil. If we had hit the land, we could have done this a million turns ago, but maybe. Maybe there's still hope. So stuff dies. We go to 10. Opponent found something else. Passes. I don't play in the land. Winds of Abandoned. Well, we'll see. Whew. Opponent's going to ping down our Charming Prince. All right. Well, opponent gets a lot of mana. We're at a fairly low life total. The mana means our ghostly prison's offline. It is going to be a close one. If we had hit the land a little sooner, I'd feel much better. Opponent, fairy seer, gonna scry. One to the top. Cruise the copter, fires up the blink moth, goes to combat, hits us. Yup, loots. An Amiri would be great. We have not found an Amiri this game either. Awkward. Awkward running. Opponent somehow finds Lodestone Golem number four. That is pretty impressive. Well, play a land. Play Sun Titan. Sun Titan gets Skyclave Apparition. Skyclave Apparition gets rid of Smuggler's Copter. Kami of Falto. Go. All right. Well, we shall see. We're at six. The problem is if they top deck walking ballista number three, then we're immediately dead. Opponent finds a grand architect. Blink Moth Nexus. Goes to combat. Attacks. Attacks. Well, we will just set Kami. So not dead yet. Untap. Another Skyclave. Well, in that case, Skyclave Apparition. Get rid of Lodestone Golem. Ranger Captain of Eos. Get Kami. Whoo! <sighs> Wow, we survived! Quadruple Lodestone Golem almost got us by keeping our Wrath offline, but no throne, and eventually we were able to stabilize. Whew, that is, that is a frightening, frightening, frightening matchup. Huh. All right, so is there anything else? Maybe do we keep the brood moth just because it's a good blocker? It's also really expensive, and we have seen our opponent uh, being very good at drawing lodestones so far. And lodestones, oh, yeah, I think we keep it though. I mean, our dream is this Heliod's intervention. Heliod's intervention is only a one of, but if we find it, that seems like a card that can just beat our uh, opponent all by itself. All right. All right, Broodmoth back in. We are on the draw against... I forget what they called this deck, actually. <laughs> well, we're not going to have a problem having enough lands. Is this worth keeping? It is risky. It's a lot of lands. So we get to Charming Prince Scry? Field of Ruin something. Oh, I'm very scared to mulligan, but we gotta... All right, all right, all right. This is, this is reasonable. We will keep. I think we put one of our two Wall of Omens to the bottom. Okay, we got a blocker into Skyclave into Flicker Wisp. That gives us, that gives us a shot. That gives us a shot. And Winds of Man is not bad either. Land, go. Hopefully we hit a couple more lands. I am still a bit worried about getting Lodestone locked. Sculptor, opponent passes. Well, there's a land, that's good. Play Wall of Omens, draw a card. Ooh, ooh, Broodmoth, eh? Opponent untaps land and grand architect and there's the throne well now we're probably gonna have to, whoa oh that doesn't work no 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 opponent no 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 it's not that good <laughs> it's good but it's not that good opponent drains us cool oh, all right one oh the question is what do we kill what do we kill there's a bunch of things we would like to kill. So we can Skyclave Apparition this, then our opponent gets to loot. We can Skyclave Apparition this. I think, I think we Skyclave Apparition Smuggler's Copter. And then next turn, we should be able to Flicker Wisp and get rid of the Throne or the Architect. Probably the Throne, and then work towards Wind of Abandon for the Architect. Okay, we might be in a pretty good position. Our opponent kind of dumped their hand. And we got rid of the looter. So now they're at the mercy of their top of their deck. I mean, I'm sure they still have some insane draws, but opponent combat attacks with both. Well, we get to block and also block. We still take two from throne though. All right, opponent passes. Well, we will flicker wisp, flicker skyclave apparition. Opponent gets a token, play another Amiria. End of turn, skyclave returns. Gets rid of the throne. 
Who and that one our opponent legend rule away might actually come into play now. Opponent pathway and goes attacking and attacking. All right, well we will block with our wall. Untap. Well, play field of ruin. Brood moth. Kami. And now I think we go on the offensive. Get in and hit ya. Who and if we draw a land for winds of abandon, oh boy, we don't even need it. Opponent scoops it up. That was frightening. That was really frightening. I have not seen this. We're going to draw a land, too. I have not seen this deck in a while. And that throw to the God Pharaoh. Wow. That got us really good in game one. In game two, we were hanging by a thread under the lodestone, Golovok. But in the end, <laughs> Luminous Broodmoth and Modern pays off. Actually, Broodmoth has been surprisingly good in this deck. Like, this is one of the new cards I was excited to try in the deck. And it has been very impressive. More impressive than I even expected it to be, let's say. So, eh, all right. Go, go, Amiri, you go. Sweet. All right. Much to brew about nothing time. We are amiria in modern. And uh, this looks like a pretty good Miri hand. Got a little bit of blink value. Got some, oh, this again. Oh, not again. Oh, hmm. Wait, no, not this either. <laughs> I saw the MDFC and I thought it was Belcher, but well, I guess we'll see. Being on the play is a little brutal. Uh, Field of Ruin can be good against Bound. Oh, no. And uh, aim. Yeah, oh, boy. This is the draw you do not want to see your aim you let Titan opponent have. Untap Scroll Turf. Picks up a land. Goes to combat. Passes. Ooh, is it even worth killing this? Probably not. They put the land into play. Hmm. Boy. Boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. What is our plan? Uh, let's play the planes. Actually, might have to kill it. So they put a land into play. They get a land. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. So if they have a bounce land, they tighten us. Ugh. But if we don't kill this, they put a land into play. They untap. They play a land. They, so I guess it doesn't matter. All right. Yeah, all right. I mean, if they got it, they got it. They just got us either way, and there's not really anything we can do to stop it, I guess? All right. Here comes the land. Ghost quarter. All right. No boy. All right. Well, that's not a Titan. Azusa is a lot of land drops. Bounce land untaps. Well, I mean, if they have the Titan, they can play the Titan. And if they can play the Titan, then we're dead. I wonder if there could be an Amiria, <laughs> an Amiria Blood Moon hybrid. Opponent spinning to win, hitting a Titan, of course. Why not? Well, all right. I guess at least our opponent had to do it the hard way, but I still think we're just dead. So Titan gets haste. This is turn three, by the way. This is turn three. This is happening. We lost the die roll. We have played a wall of omens. Our opponent has 17 lands, three creatures, an amulet, and is probably going to start making zombie tokens or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. All right. It's a Valica and a way to get more Titans. Well, I guess we're dying. Uh, So we will play Field of Ruin. We will Field of Ruin to Lario West. Get a Plains. We will pass the turn. So basically our hope is that our opponent's out of action. If this is the only Titan our opponent has and they do not have... Dried of the Ills and Grove. We have, we got a shot. We got a shot. It's not over. Opponent has a million mana. If they have another Titan, then we're super dead. Dryad would also be pretty bad. So now we're hoping they just draw lands and not finishers, basically. Oh boy. Never ending. Never ending. All right. Summoner's pack. Gets a Titan. Titan has haste. Titan gets lands. They untap. They attack us. Oh dear goodness. All right. Well, sure. I mean, what are, you, what are you even supposed to do about that? Field of the dead for zombies, and now we're dead. Yeah, I don't even, like, I don't even know what you're supposed to do about that. I mean, Damping Sphere does something, so that's good. Aven Mind Sensor does something. That's also decent. Uh, Coming of the False Hope, I guess it's fine as a one of. Probably go down, like, a Brood Moth. Shining Shoal. Seems unlikely to matter. Go down the si Shining Shoal and eh, let's go down one Ranger Captain. All right, at least we're on the play for game number two. No, all right, we're on the play. Huh. No hate cards. All right, we'll try it. I mean, we get a redraw into a Skyclave, which is something. It is not a Damping Sphere. Damping Sphere is our best card. But we can snag a Amulet, which that is helpful. Four is for opponent. Eh. Amulet. Well, play the land. Play a Wall of Omens draw card. Opponent untaps. Oh, dear. 
Oh, that's a really scary, 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 scary start. Well, we will play a Plains and Skyclave. Get rid of a Amulet past the turn. Two Skyclaves means if we don't die immediately, we can answer the Amulets. Azusa would be really bad, or like a Dryad. Cavern of Souls for our opponent. And passes. Okay. We'll play the Plains. And we are definitely getting rid of another amulet. Well, we're drawing we're drawing our sideboard cards too. If we can get this Aven Mind Sensor down, Hope Springs Eternal. Pota plays a Valakut. And passes. Ooh. Well, field of own Valakut. Get a planes. Go to combat. Attack you. Down to 14. Uh-huh. 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 Walking Ballista. Sure. And Telerio S. Well, we will untap. Um, let's go attacking. If our opponent blocks and kills one, that's fine. Opponent takes it. Well, play Charming Prince. Blink a Skyclave. Get back Skyclave. Go after Ballista. We need the Ballista gone because we need to be able to keep this Mind Sensor around if our opponent has Titan. So if they have the Ballista out, then they can kill... Then they can kill the Mind Sensor, and then the Titan becomes good again. I guess, I mean, Mind Sensor, I guess, is not guaranteed game over either. It is possible that Pony has the lands they need in the top. Another Teleria West. Opponent passing. We draw a Charming Prince. Now go to combat. Attack you. Opponent blocks and blocks. Goes to eight. Well, we will Charming Prince. Scry. Ah, uh, yeah, put on top, put on top. Pass the turn. All right, save us. Save us, Mind Sensor. Save us from this Titan. <laughs> Pony is not on a bounce land. Summoner's Pact. Hmm. Well, I guess we do it now. Mind Sensor? I don't think our opponent can afford to Pact in Negation. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> Double Summoner's Pact. This is risky, though. Our opponent needs to hit two lands, right, in their top four? Or they lose to... Or they lose to their double pact? All right, they found a Field of the Dead and a Castle Garret Brig. So opponent's not dead. End of Asuva. Copies Castle Garret Brig. Well, Windswept Teeth. Crack Windswept Teeth. Planes. Overload Winds of Abandon. Oh, they actually found a basic. That's big. That actually gives our opponent a chance here, I think. Go attacking. Oh, they had a basic in the top four. Goes to four. They have to spend their turn paying for their packs, but if they have land, they can make a blocker? Oh, man, that is that is something. All right, pays for both packs. Land, field of the dead. And reclamation sage is a blocker. Well, we will sun titan. Get back charming prince. Charming Prince, Blink Sun Titan, hit you to two. Sun Titan returns, gets back Windswept Eve, and we will pass the turn. Oh, this is so close. We need one more Mind Sensor attack. What do you got about it? This deck has done better against some of the, wow. If they hit another one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, oh my goodness, no, no, no. Dryad of the Ilsen Grove. Tapping a ridiculous amount of mana. Plays a Dryad. Has Primeval Titan in hand. Well, we will path the Dryad. Opponent fails to find. Primeval Titan. I think we're getting there? Whoa! Hits two bounce lads. Okay. Can hasten the Titan to spin again. Oh my goodness. That was really close. Considering that we had some decent hate, that was still frighteningly close. We had the Mind Sensor in response to the first Summoner's Pact, and our opponent still came really close to comboing off. Yikes. Oh, this deck's so scary. So, so scary. Well, um, uh, hmm. <sighs> Uh, I don't think we can change anything. Ghostly Prison seems like it could be okay, but the issue is our opponent has so many lands that it seems like they should be able to pay for Ghostly Prison without too big of a deal. Hmm. Two redraws and a Field of Ruin. Probably not good enough. I mean, Field of Ruin's not bad, but... Hmm. All right, well, this is better. We will keep Charming Prince to the bottom. Damping Sphere is good. Damping Sphere shuts down the bounce lands. Radiant Fountain, and oh boy, they got the amulet. Always with the amulet. Well, planes go. There's the bounce land. 
I mean, if they also have Azusa, that's pretty, pretty troubling. Might be off to a super fast start here. Amulet Bounce Land, Azusa, Forest, Valica. Yeah, I mean, oh boy. Path Azusa. Oh, opponent's just off to such a quick start. Too quick of a start. I'll play a Plains. Play a Damping Sphere, go. Oh, opponent. Untaps. We're fighting Claude, we're trying. Talaria West, untaps. Opponent passes. I'll play a Plains. Skyclave Apparition. Get rid of the Amulet. Oh, no Titans. They definitely have a Titan. Bounce land. Opponent passes. Ranger Captain of Eos. Is that good enough? Well, go to combat. Attack. Hit ya. Hmm. Play Field of Ruin. Field of Ruin, Teleria West. Get a Plains. Wall of Omens. Oh, but they're to prime time mana. Oh, come on. No Primeval Titan one time. It's asking so much against this deck, because that's all they do. There's a Primeval Titan. Well, we slowed it down, but I think it's still going to kill us. Because once there's one Titan, there's usually a million more. Oh, oh. All right, so what's our plan now? Yeah, without an even Mind Sensor, tough. The Damping Sphere helps slow our opponent down a little bit, but not enough to actually keep our opponent from winning the game. Field of the Dead, Zombies, Passes... Well, I mean, Winds of Abandon. Not even that good, because it just makes more zombies. <laughs> and we can't cast another spell because... Damping Sphere. Well, pass the turn. Opponent. Castle Garenbrig. Zombie. For free. Goes attacking. Yeah, I don't know about this Field of the Dead card. Well, play Ranger Captain of Eos. Grab a Thraben Inspector. Play Thraben Inspector. Play a Flooded Strad. Pass the turn. Opponent. Oh no. Mm, boy. Grab the Ilsen Grove. Free Lightning Bolt. Well, I guess we sack it. Not that it's good. Okay, so what is on our list now? Opponent goes to combat. Ha. Huh. Oh, wait. More, more lands. Excuse me. More Lightning Bolts, more zombies. <laughs> Opponent hits us down to 13. And ha. Huh. It looks like we fought a good fight, but in the end, too many titans, too many zombies. I guess we could draw the second Winds of Abandon, and that would, like, help for a second, maybe? Not even really, because then they just make more zombies. Opponent passes. It's a Myria. That's the namesake card, but it's too little, too late. Lethal on board. Well, we could sack the clue. I don't think there's anything we can draw that matters, but we might as well. More lands. Yeah. Oh, Primeval Titans! Too good, too good. Hmm. Field of the Dead, 2019. It's quite the year. <laughs> oh, well, one more to go. One more to go for the winning record. All right, much improved about, oh, mulligan time. <laughs> much improved about nothing. We are trying to Amiria our opponents in modern. It all comes down to this. Can we get the winning record? We got to win this match to get the treasure chest. Uh, we'll keep this. Probably going to put shoulder to the bottom. And, I mean, only two lands, but in theory, we can blink wall. Oh, these mulligans. These mulligans. Does this mean... Uh, cast your votes now. Does this mean we're about to get Tron? <laughs> I'm going to go with yes. We haven't played Tron this league. Opponent mulled to five. Is our opponent very unlucky, or are they going to carn us on turn three? Oh, ho, 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 ho. Okay. We're not getting carned on turn three. I like the sounds of that. Uh, so Merfolk, most likely? Man, this is the, the Blast from the Past League. <laughs> we played the Mono Blue Artifact deck. We played Jund, and now, I mean, I guess this could be Spirits, but seems like there's a decent chance this is Merfolk. This is, this is like we're playing Modern in 2015. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I stepped into a, a time portal of some kind. <laughs> Back to Moto of five years ago. Opponent. Well, they have a handful of action, apparently. Well, play the land. Go to combat. Get in with Thrabes. Hit you. Charming Prince. Blink. Wall of Omens. Whoa! Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right. Well, opponent fizzled our Charming Prince. It did cost them a reasonable amount of life, though. I guess the bad news is this could lead to us being mana screwed. Opponent untaps. Down to 14 thanks to Dismember. This has got to be... Got to be Merfolk. Because Spirits has white mana. Muta Vault and Silver Guild Adept revealing a Lord. 
an opponent passing. We draw. Ooh, Skyclave. Well, that's Skyclave. I think we actually just snag the Ether Vial for now. Opponent going to put a Lord into play. No, well, get it with Charming Prince. Opponent goes to 12. Pass the turn. So this is going to make it harder for our opponent to keep playing multiple things each turn. Phantasmal Image. Copies the Master of the Pearl Trident. Attacks. Yeah, it's us. Sure. Opponent passes. Now play Amiria. Hmm. Path the Master. Go to combat. Attack you. Charming Prince. Blink Skyclave. Opponent gets a 1-1. One, one. We get to snag another Merfolk Lord. All right, two lords down. And we got the bigger board. And we got the more lads. Opponent hits a lad. Oh, jeez. Another master. Well, opponent has run a lot of masters, that's for sure. This is making it tough for us to attack at the moment, which is awkward. Opponent passes. I mean, they all get into a lot of lords. Let's crack the clue draw card. Hmm. Play the planes. Who oh, passed the turn. Uh, I guess we should have played Amiria. Amiria in case we draw Sun Titan. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Okay, okay. Who oh, opponent. About it, about it. That is an oppressive amount of lords being drawn. Uh, well, we will block and block. Yeah, that is a little crazy. Kill the silver gill. We're gonna actually need to draw something. Yeah, about it. Passes. Wow, maximum punishment. Oh no. Well, if we lose this game, it is uh, it is our fault. We are to blame if we lose this game because we played the planes instead of the Amiria. Opponent fires up the land. Goes to combat. Attacks. Well, we will block and block. Kill the Mutavault. Opponent gets a 2-2. Two -two. Well, go go Sun Titan. Sun Titan gets back Charming Prince. Charming Prince. Blink Sun Titan. No attacks. Sun Titan returns. Gets back Charming Prince. Charming Prince. Blink Sun Titan. And we pass. Opponent untaps, and I think we're good now. Now that we have Sun Titan going, it should be really hard for our opponent to win. Opponent, do we get the desperation all out attack? Opponent passes. Sun Titan returns. Sun Titan gets back Skyclave Apparition. Boy, Skyclave is such a big upgrade for this deck. Gets rid of Master of the Pearl Trident. We untap. We go to combat. Trickster. All right, stops the Sun Titan. Sort of. Well, attack, attack. Oh, this is fine. We'll just pass uh, Path the Master. Put it blocks, put it blocks. Well, Path the Master. Wow. All right, Force of Negation, pitching a Mana League. So opponent's alive-ish. We will Flicker Wisp, Flicker Sun Titan. I mean, our Charming Princes are pretty disposable. And opponent, I mean, Sun Titan gets back Charming Prince, Blink Sun Titan gets back Charming Prince, gets back something else, and okay, that went pretty well. That went pretty well. Uh, so I guess we get to bring in Kami of False Hope in two ghostly prisons. We will go down Luminous Broodmoth, Ranger Captain of Eos, and actually, hmm, do we want to keep a Shining Shoal for the memes? Probably not. So let's keep Ranger Captain. One Broodmoth, no Shining Shoals. All right, all right, all right, all right. Pona played a lot of Lords. They did Mulligan a lot too, but they did play a lot of Lords that game. Ooh, 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 ooh. Well, we're going to try this. It's a little scary that we have nothing to do for the first two turns, Benthic Biomancer. Uh, Path is a great draw. That is something we can do earlier in the game. We would like to keep hitting lands as well. Opponent, Lord of Atlantis. Well, Path it. All right, Lord one down. Opponent gets a land. Come on, two drop. We could use a two drop. Well, all right, Mizville Plains, go. Land is fine. So we get to Skyclave this turn into Ranger Captain plus something? Opponent, Waterlog Grove. Ooh, do they have Collected Company? They might have Collected Company. Wow. Wow, that's it? Okay. That is the best case scenario. Discards a land to grow their Biomancer. That is acceptable. Post combat, Silvergill revealing a trickster. I'll play the land. Skyclave Apparition. Get rid of the Biomancer. Pass the turn, opponent. Reasury. That is like the best Merfolk Lord. Once you get it down the battlefield, the untapping is very good. Opponent combat. No attacks. Well, path Reasury. Flooded Strand. Crack Flooded Strand. Planes. Ranger Captain of Eos. I think we're going to take Thraben Inspector here. We would like to keep hitting our land drops. Um, 
do we want to attack? You know what? I think we will. If our opponent wants to trade a Merfolk for a Silver, uh, a Skyclave, we're kind of okay with that. Merfolk's off the battlefield means Lord's less of a problem. Wow. I mean, I guess our opponent's also afraid of us blinking it, so that makes some amount of sense, but we're still relatively okay with that. Opponent dismember. Wow. Okay. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. Opponent untaps. What do you got? More Lords. Of course. They keep coming. And... Ugh, even more lords. All right, lords for days. Opponent hits us for one. Yeah, down to 15. Hmm. <laughs> Missing land drop's not helpful. I'll get rid of Master of the Pearl Trident. Play Thraben Inspector. Oh, come on, lands. Come on, lands. If our opponent doesn't have a lord on the battlefield, we can get rid of the second one with Flicker Wisp in a weird roundabout way. Uh, because it is actually a clone, opponent. Oh, no, they keep coming. Another lord. That's That might be too many. Opponent gets and hits us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. Down to 12. Passes. We draw in a Myria. We play Luminous Brood Moth. Not super comfortable with where we're at, though. We know they have a Trickster in hand. We're down to 12. We're going to have to hit an untap land for this Sun Titan, I think. We're very close to being dead here. Like, very close to straight up dead. Pass the turn. Oh, just behind the Lord trade. These mimics would have been horrible if we could have kept that first Lord off the battlefield, but we couldn't. There's a Trickster. Opponent's going to tap the Brood Moth. Untaps. Lord number 40. Quite literally. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Is that game? Wow, that is insane. Well, it's not game, but I think it uh I think it beats us. So we get to chum, but I don't think we can get out of this now. Opponent just drew too many lords. So we get back to Raven Inspector. Wow. Windswept teeth, we can't crack it. And we'll scoop it up. Whew. Well, okay. Opponent uh, good at drawing lords. Run it back. We're on the play! So apparently, our opponent is very clone heavy, so we need to really focus on keeping the first- Oh no, not like this, Magic Gods. Not like this. All right, well, this will keep Sun Titan to the bottom. So I think our biggest goal is to keep the first Lord off the battlefield. If we can keep the first Lord off the battlefield, then all of our opponent's clones end up looking pretty silly. Relic of Progenitus. All right, I'll play a Plains. Wall of Omens draw a card. The good news is we have a lot of removal in this hand. Pass the turn. Relic can shut down Sun Titan stuff eventually. Island. All right, so Lords are basically just kill on sight. Opponent passing. Slow start. Well, um, play a Wall of Omens. Would you like to Mana Leak? Wow, they actually do. Sure. Amiria, go. Opponent eats the Wall of Omens. Untaps. Silver Gale revealing a Trickster. Finds a land, plays a land. Ether Vile. Well, opponent, uh, passes. We will Skyclave Apparition. Get rid of Silver Gilladapt. Flooded Strand, pass the Tur. I think we want to leave up the path here to prevent Lord into clone the Lord. That is, that is a blowout. Opponent plays a land. Passing again. Well, play Windswept Teeth. Go to combat. Get in hit ya. Opponent runs out of Trickster, taps down the Wall of Omens, trades with Skyclave. Yep. Well, we will Skyclave. <laughs> Opponent exiles the Skyclave. Get rid of Aether Vial. Opponent vials it. Benthic Biomancer. Oh, crack Flooded Strand. Opponent adapts the Biomancer. Discards a land. Uh, we'll take a Plains. Play Thraben Inspector. Get a clue. Pass the turn. Opponent. We really don't want this Skyclave to die because we would like the ability to blink it if we can find a Charming Prince or a Flicker Wisp. Opponent exiles from the graveyard, goes to combat, hits us. We will take it down to 17. More Biomancers. About it. Passes. Well, sack the. Hmm. Let's, uh, let's crack one sub teeth. Get a Plains. Sack the clue. Play the Plains. Ranger Captain of Eos. Get a Thraben Inspector. Pass the turn. We do have a lot of cards that draw a card, which is kind of helpful. And a 3-3 three, is nice. A 3-3 three, three actually stops some of our opponent's shenanigans. All right, opponent finds a dismember. Opponent is running out of cards, though. This is almost over for our opponent. They're down to two cards. That is not a lot of cards in hand. Opponent exiles a card from the graveyard. Goes to combat. Goes on a 
small attack. Well, we will take two, block the Biomancer. Our opponent can't really afford to give this up either because Amiria is getting close. Well, play Thraben Inspector, get a clue. Play Amiria. Pass the turn. Oh, we're like one good draw away, I think. Opponent fights another trickster, taps down the wall. One card in hand, untaps. Exiles from the graveyard. Oh, this is so close. It is so close. Loots. Yup. Discards a land. Goes to combat. Wow, goes on the big attack. Well, I guess we block, block, block. Yeah, we're gonna give up on our Skyclave here. So stuff dies. Opponent gets a 1-1. One, one. Well, sack the clue draw card. Untap. Ghostly prison. Pass the turn. No attacks. Opponent untaps. Ghostly Prison is pretty good here. It's going to make it hard for our opponent to attack. And if we ever get our opponent tapped down, this Winds of Abandon can be a Wrath. We're still going to need to find a, find a finisher or something. This Relic is obnoxious. Opponent goes to combat. Wow. Going to keep attacking. Well, we will block. Take two. Untap. Sun Titan. Misfill Planes. Well, let's Winds of Abandon. Sweep the board. Opponent does get a bunch of islands. Get in and hit ya. Oh, we need like one more good draw. We're so close. If we can get rid of this relic, then we turn on a lot. Charming Prince would be fine. Flicker with Sun Titan. We have a lot of stuff that would be good. Little worried about the amount of mana our opponent has now. That could be a that could be a concern. Opponent exiles a card from the graveyard. Still a land short of a myriading. Wow. Full price silver gale. Okay. And mute vault. And opponent passes. Oh, the Oh no! The worst draw. That is that is literally what we did not want to draw. Like, oh, oh. It, another Amiria does. Oh, it's a dead land that doesn't even turn out our stuff. Lord of Atlantis for our opponent. Clones. Well, we will pass the Lord of Atlantis. Opponent gets to copy Silver Gill and draw a card. We are still not safe. We are still not safe. Oh, then Amiria was such a horrible timing. Oh, no. Opponent exiles our path. Come on, deck. Give us a real card. Give us a real card. Opponent passes. <sighs> Field of Ruin. Blow up the Muta Vault. Get a Plains. Oh, <sighs> pass the turn. I'm not feeling good, though. Not the best time to flood. Not the best time to have three Amirias. Opponent exiles Field of Ruin. If they have to crack the relic, that is some bit of good news for us. Because then our next stuff that dies starts to come back. And if we can start getting a Myria value, that will get us there eventually. That is assuming there isn't eventually. Opponent. Wow, Threads of Disloyalty. What a draw. Okay. Steals our best blocker. Goes to combat. Hits us. Hits us. Pays four. Yeah, can't block. Wow, that Threads was so insane. Down to four. Opponent passes. Well, we trigger a Myria. Does our opponent sack the Relic? Yeah. Well, Relic's down. We need to draw a real card, though. If we draw another land, then we are dead. Almost assuredly. <sighs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, boy. Oh, dear. Oh, so close. So, so, well, we lost to <laughs> two decks from 2015, which I guess at least it was a, a nice nostalgic league. Nostalgic with our deck and nostalgic with our opponent's deck, although I'm a little bit, a uh, little bit disappointed about these results. Opponent draws another Lord and we will scoop it up. Oh, wow. That is, that is brutal. Well, I mean, look at our matches. Every single one was incredibly close. And a lot of it just came down to uh, to the variance of magic. I think if we had played, if we played this league again, uh, I think it would be very easy for really all of these matches to be reversed. Like the ones that we won, we could have lost. The ones that we lost, we very easily could have won. Unfortunately, that last game was a little bit, uh, that was a sad way to end with a, a winning record on the line where we drew like 11 lands, 12 lands, and just kept drawing them there at the end when we needed essentially any bit of action. And then our opponent, I think, drew like three lands, <laughs> if you don't count the ones that they got from our, uh, from our Winds of Abandon. Oh, well, 
interesting. I do think this deck's good and probably better than its record uh, record look. Just like looking at these games, they were all so close. Well, that's wrap up stuff. Be right back. So what did we learn this week about Mono White Amiria? in modern and oh my god did we play close games if you look at our league every single one of our matches was either 2-1 in our favor or 1-2 against us so every match went three games every match was super close technically we finished with a 2-3 which eh, not the most exciting would have liked to at least get 3-2 out of it but really because of how close all these games were it's really hard to feel too bad about it especially considering this is kind of budget-ish, $276. That's pretty cheap for a deck in Modern. So I was pretty happy overall with the deck's performance, even though I would have liked to squeeze out another match win or two. As far as the deck itself, a little bits of feedback on the deck. First, the core of the deck is still sweet. Like, Sun Titan is still busted. Getting back Flicker Wisp, or now Charming Prince to get more Sun Titan triggers, really busted. I think the new cards, though, are really what improves this deck and sells me on its potential in modern like skyclave apparition is so amazingly perfect for this deck it's already a great removal spell one of the best white cards in the modern format but in this deck it's even better because we can play it get rid of our opponent's thing and then use flicker wisp or charming prince to flicker it to get rid of something else our opponent only gets back a random token so no big deal then later in the game once it dies sun titan can get it back to get rid of something else so just skyclave apparition all by itself is a huge upgrade to the deck but i was actually surprised of the power of mothra in specific a luminous brood moth luminous brood moth was actually really good it allowed us to beat the degenerate belcher combo deck with rager captain of eos where we could rager captain sack to fizzle their combo for a turn it comes back with brood moth our opponents just kind of locked out of doing anything because we could do that for two or three or four turns if we draw a couple of ragers so i was very impressed with luminous brood moth and i was a little skeptical heading into it i was like eh, is it actually going to be good in our deck but it was actually pretty powerful in some matchups so i really like the deck it's fun it's not super expensive for a modern deck and like i said i know our overall record ended up only being two and three but when you actually look at the matches and just how ridiculously close they are we honestly could have been anything from zero and five to five and zero oh in this league like every single match was super super close super super tight and we just came out on the losing end of three of them and the winning end of two of them so i think if you replayed the league with the same deck it has the power to go 5-0. It also could go 0-5. Just expect a lot of really close grindy matchups. It's not going to blow people out, run away with games like combo decks or infect. You're just going to grind and eke out this value and it'll hopefully take over in the late game. So that is our much improved for this week. Mono White Amiria. I really like the new build. It's really sweet. If you're looking for a way to upgrade your old budget deck, it has some really good options in it. So anyway, that's Mono White Amiria. That's our much improved for this week. Thanks for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it. And I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.